starts right now. After an hour and a half delay, closing arguments finally underway in the trial of Andre McDonald, the Air Force Major on trial for the 2019 murder of his wife, Andreen McDonald. Our Erica Hernandez is joining us live now. Out I lost IFP. Uh, we are apparently having some uh, problems getting through to Erica Hernandez. Can you hear us now? We will get check back with her in just a moment. Meantime, we're going to move on to other news. Okay. There is some good news to report. San Antonio police saying that they have found a missing toddler who is now safe. That Amber Alert you may have seen is now discontinued. The one year old disappeared around one o'clock this morning from the an east side home and police are telling us the child's father was taken into custody for questioning. Now to a silver alert, the Converse Police Department looking for 66 year old Valida Bobbitts. If her name sounds familiar, she was the subject of a previous silver alert. She is diagnosed with a cognitive impairment. She was last seen around seven o'clock last night on Rock Cove land in Converse. She was in a blue 2019 Ford Fiesta with the Tennessee license plate of 4M81P8. If you know anything about it, you can call the Converse Police Department if you have any information. That number there on your screen, 658-2322. A man now charged with murder explaining to police that he pulled the trigger because he felt disrespected. 18 year old Julio Cesar Ramirez charged and booked yesterday. An arrest warrant affidavit states that on August 7th, Ramirez shot Albert Paleo Casoreno in the head near a dumpster outside of a West Side restaurant. Officers tell us that earlier that evening, Ramirez was in a drive through at the restaurant when the victim asked him for money. Arrest paperwork states that Ramirez said he felt disrespected, so later returned to the restaurant, but with a gun. The shooting was caught on video by a camera that was mounted at a nearby Via Transit Center, and that video helped police identify Ramirez. Fire investigators sorting through the ashes in an apartment north of downtown. They're trying to figure out how that fire on West Magnolia near San Pedro Avenue got started. Katrina Weber tells us why one woman says she is surprised that she made it out safely. With more than a dozen fire trucks flooding into the 400 block of West Magnolia, there was no sleeping in for anyone in the area. Fire broke out inside a ground floor apartment of this building just before 7 this morning. Monica Sutton is glad she already was awake. Uh, we were watching the show and it ended and we just happened to notice the sound. And so my hubby ran out to go see what was going on and then started screaming, wake up, get up, get up. She says the sight he saw down the hall was fire and the sound was the smoke detector, but coming from a different apartment. There's supposed to be one above my bedroom door, one outside of my bedroom door and somewhere by the front door and there isn't one. Sutton says she feels like luck was on her side. She escaped along with her husband, service dog and a neighbor's pet. Firefighters say another adult and infant who live in the building also made it out safely. They say the apartment where the fire broke out was tough for crews to navigate. Uh, at this point, we, we don't know. There's too much stuff in there. They're having to go through too many layers of, of debris. One woman who lives here told me that because this building is so old, she was worried about the fire quickly spreading. But firefighters say that wasn't the case. They kept it to just that one unit. It didn't extend up to the second floor. It didn't go into the attic space, anything like that. During the fire, CPS Energy had to cut electricity to the building. But firefighters say once the power is back on, most people here should be able to go back home soon. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now back to our top story again. Closing arguments finally underway in the trial of Andre McDonald. That's the Air Force major on trial for the murder of his wife, Andreen McDonald. Erica Hernandez once again joining us live now outside the Justice Center. So Erica, what took place this morning that caused those closing arguments to be delayed? 
Yeah, David and Ursula, it took about an hour and a half for the judge to decide on language that was in the charge. The defense saying they wanted some of that language to be taken out. But in the end, it will be up to the jury to decide whether Andre McDonald could be found guilty on either a murder charge or a manslaughter charge or not guilty altogether. There was some discussion earlier uh, last week when that uh, alleged confession occurred over the phone that the idea is that they're going for a manslaughter charge, a lesser charge rather than the murder charge. What is the difference between the two? So the biggest difference between the two, Ursula, is how much time he would serve. If it is a murder charge, it's a first degree felony, which means his punishment can range anywhere from five to 99 or to life in prison. If it is a manslaughter charge, that means his sentence could be anywhere from five to 20 years, which is a significant difference in how much time he could potentially serve in prison. So, Erica, with this delay today, are we expecting to get a verdict today, or is that going to take uh, more time, maybe even into tomorrow or the weekend? You know, it's ultimately up to the jury, David. We can never know exactly what they're thinking when they are in deliberations. If this does go on into the evening, I expect, you know, which is a possibility, um, they could be sequestered. We don't know. Um, or we could get a verdict quickly. Um, once they're in that deliberation room, anything is, is, uh, is up in the air as far as us waiting. We never know just how long we will be waiting. But we will be here. We are live streaming this trial, Gavel to Gavel, gavel so you can watch it on KSAT dot com ksat plus and our ksat youtube channel thank you so much for that update erica we'll check back with you if we get any news from the courtroom meantime the other huge story that we're watching is the aftermath of all that icy weather the ice is melting all around san antonio and up in the hill country and that is now causing some problems that people don't really think about Sure, yeah, it's it's all melting and uh, we're seeing the aftermath of what was left behind from all that ice. Uh, some melting occurred overnight and then now a lot of temperatures, even the whole country, are above freezing. Now we got to go out and survey the damage and there's going to be a lot of work ahead for folks in the whole country. Just so many, so many branches down uh, due to that ice improvement, though, and the sun may actually pop out today if you've missed the sun. <laughs> we could see some this afternoon. Let me show you the satellite picture. And this uh, does show where we've got breaks in the clouds as you go west. So Lakey over to uh, Uvalde and Del Rio. The sun has popped out. We've got one little area of very light showers. This is probably nothing more than a few sprinkles that will work their way through San Antonio. And then behind that, we'll see some thinning of the clouds. And that will allow temperatures to jump up, too. We're at 40 here in San Antonio, 37 Kerrville, 41 in New Braunfels. And temperatures actually rose overnight. And that's why we started the process of thawing out as early as, say, midnight last night. Uh, 38 Holotus, 35 Comfort, 37 Canyon Lake, and I know it says 32 there in Bernie Stage, but I'm not sure I'm buying that number. It's probably a little bit warmer than that. I think everyone is above freezing at this point, which is exactly what we need. Uh, there are still some folks without power in the whole country. We know across the city of Austin, there's still a lot of folks without power. So it's going to be some time before we completely pull out of this, but uh, it does get better. 46 degrees at 3 o'clock, 47 by 4 p.m. Uh, 47 is probably our high. Clearing skies tonight. Now, it does get cold again. I think we'll be down into the mid to maybe lower 30s, but the payoff is this weekend. Some beautiful weather. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. And we continue to follow this aftermath, and there's some going on in New Braunfels right now. Some residents of New Braunfels being told to boil their water before they drink it. New Braunfels Utilities reporting that it lost power, and as a result, it lost water pressure. And that loss of pressure could create a breeding ground for harmful bacteria. So just to be on the safe side, people in the River Chase pressure zone should be boiling their water before drinking it or using things, using it for things like washing your hands or brushing your teeth. The NBU has not said how long it expects this boil order to last.
And even though the real nasty part of the weather has moved on, there have been some serious issues left behind here in San Antonio. As Justin just mentioned, there are still some power outages. We're talking about 50 outages affecting around 4,000 customers. Meanwhile, in Bernie, a scheduled outage left most people in the dark this morning. The power outage starting at 9 o'clock this morning as crews with the Lower Colorado River Authority worked to repair damages to the transmission line caused by the icy weather. It was only expected to last an hour. As of 11 this morning, people were still reporting their power was out. It's still not clear when Pertinalis Electric Cooperative customers will get their power services restored. And some other Texas communities are hit harder as well over the last couple of days. That includes Austin. Over there, thousands of people still don't have electricity, and travelers are still feeling the ripple effect at the airports there. ABC's Morgan Norwood reports there have been thousands of flight cancellations. That deadly winter storm across the south. From ice, sleet to snow, the below freezing temperatures making for a travel nightmare on the roads. We slid on some black ice. Just stay home and stay safe. In Texas, the icy conditions leaving some drivers stuck. And once I stopped, I couldn't get going back up. This semi truck in Oklahoma losing control, sliding off the highway. The thick sheets of ice bringing down power lines, leaving hundreds of thousands of customers across the South without power. In Dallas, some walking miles just to find groceries. Everything is closed. In Arkansas, HVAC workers swarmed with service calls during the cold snap. Overwhelmed, can't keep up. We're behind on installs, we're behind on repairs. As the winter weather continues, more than 70 million Americans across the country on alert. Montana down to Mississippi and north to Maine under ice cold and flood alerts. And in addition to the dozens of crashes seen in the south, nearly 700 flights scheduled for today have already been canceled following thousands of cancellations and delays since the storm set in on Monday. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, a reminder that the deadline for property tax payments today. The deadline was extended because of the winter weather we've had over the past couple of days. The tax assessor collector office is now open until 630 this evening. You can also make your payments online if you'd like at www.bear.org slash tax or by phone by calling the number there on your screen. You can drop off locations are also available today. A local business attracting a wide array of clients from locals to celebrities and even presidents. How our hat store here in San Antonio is helping people get ready for the rodeo. And once again, the Spurs hanging with the Kings tough last night till the end. And that was without their newest rookie sensation. Highlights coming up. We are just 77 days away from the start of the biggest party in San Antonio, but some San Antonians are already in the fiesta spirit after two big announcements. Last night, the Witty Museum was the backdrop for the 2023 Miss Fiesta crowning. Jaslyn Ramirez was one of 22 applicants, and over the past four months, she and the other four finalists had been attending community events and getting trained to prepare them for this potential rain. The process for Miss Fiesta for me was amazing and honestly was a great experience and it's something that I'll remember forever. Now, once she got that beautiful crown, she helped to unveil this year's official Fiesta poster that was done by Kathleen Whittle. Whittle said she was inspired by the architecture at the McNay Art Museum, as well as some Texas staples like blue bonnets and horny toads. Rodeo season is here and we are taking you to a store downtown where they've been specializing in shaping and fitting hats for more than 100 years. Tiffany Huerta shows us how family is at the center of the store's success. This photo is Pope John Paul II getting his hat from us in the 80s. Since 1917, presidents, tourists, Locals and celebrities have been coming here. Johnny Cash, he wrote us a note. It says, to Paris Hatters, thanks for putting me in the shade. The moment you step inside Paris Hatters in downtown San Antonio, you will see hundreds of hats on the walls, 
and memories. This is my grandfather seated at the desk, and that's my dad when he was young. Alex Sledge is the store manager and says they provide a unique experience for customers. We have all of our Westerns on this side, and we can shape up a hat however you like. We carry every quality that Stetson makes in both straw and felt, starting at 6X all the way up to 1,000X, which is the finest hat that they make. The store has over 3,000 hats in stock, and the company Stetson creates these hat bands for this particular hat that you can only find at this store. Getting a hat is kind of like getting an art piece for your head. You want it to be the right color for you. You want it to be, you know, the right brim size. You want it to frame your face. Alex's mom, Myrna Cortez, the owner of the store, is excited for the future. We're very proud to be an iconic part of San Antonio and extremely proud of our daughter, Alex, who is now the next generation that's ready to take over. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. They've got so many neat hats over there. Amazing. And you're going to see a lot of them in about next week, right? I know. I'm going to get started. Yeah. We already had our winter weather rush for the Good. rodeo, so we don't Got it out of the way, right? <laughs> oh. Okay, so you're guaranteeing great weather for the Saturday cattle drive, right? Uh, I am. I am. Don't listen to the groundhog. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he said there's more winter on the way. I don't think so. Uh, at least not in the next week. Uh, the aquifer is up four tenths of a foot to 637.7, and your pollen count molds are low. They're down at 60. That's a great looking pollen count. Uh, we're still checking in on some of those power outages, and we've got the numbers for you. Plus, we'll talk about how much sun we could see over the weekend coming up. So the Hill Country just keeps hitting, getting hit with stuff. So it was all the ice and the trees and everything else, and now you have to watch for tree walking under trees you don't want to do that street signs power lines they all got the ice on them and now it's all starting to melt and come straight down on your head if you're not paying any attention i, I so. think we should get some footage of we have our broadcast tower right behind the building that too <laughs> that thing is very tall so it's yeah. got huge icicles that are right now raining down on the parking lot and hopefully no cars. Yeah, you don't want to be anywhere near that. And you guys uh, make a very good point. Uh, these icicles are starting to come down in spots in Hill Country and you, you have to be careful because they can injure you. There is no doubt about it. And this is going to go down in the record books of one of the more significant ice storms that we've seen here uh, across central Texas, leaking down into parts of San Antonio, but more specifically the city of Austin. I mean, they really took it on the chin with this ice storm. And as of last check, now these are round numbers, but we're able to look at the total power outages per county. And right now there in uh, Travis County, 170,000 people without power. That is a huge number. Uh, the power outages are significant because the ice weighed down the power lines, trees coming down on the power lines, and we've dealt with some of that here. Now in Bear County, things have gotten much, much better. Most of the power is restored. There's still a couple of thousand without power. And I know CPS is still working on that. And you see in the Hill Country, there are still uh, some pretty significant numbers. We see the green core that's kind of a step up, but more folks without power there. And then really up and down the I-35 corridor. I mean, it is this whole stretch here from San Antonio to Dallas that uh, really, really did get hit hard by this ice storm. Hopefully it improves in the coming days, but we're seeing so many scenes like this where these trees are just coming down, these uh, oak trees, some of them very, very old, but the ice was just too much weight for them to hold. And uh, there they're snapping and collapsing and hopefully not falling on vehicles or anything like that. But we're trying to get more information. If you want to go to KSAT.com, we did have an article yesterday about what to do insurance-wise if you do get damaged from one of these trees. And I know Mia Montgomery, meteorologist Mia Montgomery, is working on more information today about why some of these trees uh, you know, are collapsing and the reason behind that and if the drought played a role in all that. And we're going to have more information on that coming up a little bit later. Uh, meantime, let's look at the big picture here. Look at all the cloud cover. It's still there. But this storm system, this is the back edge of it. We're getting rid of it. It's coming through. Once this passes by, the sun is out. We're getting great weather for the weekend. There's still some precipitation up here across North Texas, but even this is starting to turn to rain as temperatures warm up statewide. And the bulk of the precipitation is moving out. We've even got a nice little break in the clouds down here that will try to work towards San Antonio this afternoon which should boost temperatures. So Lakey starting to see a little bit of sun, western parts of Yuvia Valley County, the sun is out and temperatures should be jumping up as a result. Right now we're sitting at 40. It's still chilly out there. We've still got a north northwesterly wind at 12, which means there's a wind chill still. 37 in Rock Springs, 37 in Kerrville, 41 in New Braunfels, most everyone in the upper 30s, low 40s. As I said earlier, 
That number is probably not correct. I would imagine that's a little bit higher than what that is showing. Uh, wind chill values still down in the 20s in some spots. Bulverde feels like 30 right now in Canyon Lake with those gusty winds. Feels like 33 here in town. Here's a look at the forecast, and I mentioned the clearing probably works in later this afternoon, and then by tonight we're going to go clear. And that will allow temperatures to fall again. Uh, we may get down to freezing in some spots in the hill country, so we'll have to watch for some refreezing. I don't think we see that here in town. Uh, 47, by the way, this afternoon, some 50s on the map to the south and west. But tonight, down to 36 or 35 or so here in town. Fair Oaks Ranch, Bernie, Kerrville, Canyon Lake. We'll have to watch for a little bit of refreezing if there's any leftover moisture as temperatures do briefly get back down to freezing. But tomorrow they'll jump right back up. And very quickly, I want to point out that we're in February now. I want to give you some of the averages. 65 is the average high to start the month. 70 is the average high to end the month. February is a month of extremes. We've seen a little bit of everything in this month. Record low is four back in 1899. Record high, 100 back in 1996. Do you remember that? Got up to 100 in February in San Antonio. So we literally see everything. 59 Friday, 62 Saturday. The cattle drive will be a little chilly early. Should be nice once that sun comes up, though. 72 Sunday. We do have some more rain chances showing up next week, guys. That groundhog is wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Hey, the injury bug biting hard. The Spurs tried to end a losing streak last night against the Kings. And also got some reaction to the new Texans head coach. Coming up in sports. First, try to crown the Kings in a six game losing streak last night. The ATT Center, first quarter. Jeremy Sohan with the ball, and watch what he does just out of the blue. Oh, ow, that hurts. Grabbed his lower back, popped sent in Josh Richardson. Sohan sent to the locker room, never came back. And then off camera, Trey Jones got hurt. It was his left foot, and he never left. He left and never came back. He's Stanley Johnson to talk a pearl layup. Spurs up 31 30. Second quarter, Kings get some breathing room. Ron Fox steals the ball, slam dunk. Moments later, Fox steals it again. Plays the alley oop with Malik Monk. That is pretty. It's them, but it's pretty. 49 37 Kings. They led 61 54 at half. We go to the third quarter, closing seconds. Fox hits a 15 footer at the buzzer. The Kings up 89-84, but their lead was cut all the way down from 12. Fourth quarter, Spurs still fighting. Doug McDermott attacking the rim for the bucket. San Antonio trailed 89-88. Kings able to hold on and get strong at the end. Getting 34 from DeMontis Sabonis, 31 from Fox, and 22 from Monk. Spurs rookie Malachi Branham scored a career-high 22, but the Spurs end up dropping their seventh in a row, 119-109. You know, I was the next guy up, and I was just trying to do whatever I can. Um, so, you know, that's got to have a mentality. Um, like you said, two starters went out. Um, Roby, when he came in, hit some big shots. Um, so, yeah, next guy up. He's playing well. He's getting more and more aggressive and doing well at both ends of the floor. So his progress is great. All right, so the Spurs are going to host the Sixers tomorrow night. AT&T Center, last game before the rodeo road trip. We're going to have an update on Sohan and Jones for you as soon as we find out their availability. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Domingo Ryan says he can't wait to get to work in Houston, and we're getting reaction to him becoming the Texans' next head coach. Tuesday night, the Texans officially named him as the team's sixth head coach in franchise history, ending their three-week search. He's the Texans' fourth field boss in just four seasons and says he has what it takes to turn this team around. His former Texas teammate, Wade Smith, was asked, why is D'Amico the right fit for this job? He's the right guy because he's, he's the ultimate leader. Like, since he, since he came into the league as a player, um, he was looked at as the captain in the heart of the defense as a rookie. Gets traded away, goes to Philadelphia. I end up joining him there in Philadelphia a couple years later. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Everybody in Philadelphia loves him. Everybody um, buys into to, to what he is and who he is as a person. Um, and then he's translated that to what he was able to do in his leadership uh, skills and ability as a player, as a coach. The Texans are going to introduce D'Amico to the city and the rest of the NFL today at 4 o'clock. And we'll be right back. 
The fallout from the Tyree Nichols beating death setting the stage for a police reform showdown with the Congressional Black Caucus and President Joe Biden. ABC's M. Wynn reports members are expected to discuss how the White House can use its strength to usher in some new legislation in Congress. Today, President Biden meeting with the Congressional Black Caucus at the White House amid renewed calls for police reform. This after recently released video shows the violent beating of 29-year-old Tyree Nichols by Memphis police officers following a traffic stop. He died three days later. One must ask, was not it in the interest of keeping the public safe that Tyree Nichols would be with us here today? Vice President Kamala Harris at Nichols's funeral Wednesday, vowing to stay committed to cracking down on police brutality. We demand that Congress pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Joe Biden will sign it. But back in Washington, an all too familiar inflection point. The last round of bipartisan negotiations for comprehensive police reform fell apart in 2021 over several issues, including qualified immunity, the legal doctrine that limits victims' lawsuits against police officers. At that time, Biden signed an executive order to create a national database of police misconduct, among other provisions. The White House calling on Congress to pass permanent legislation. The president told Mr. Nichols's family that he would continue pushing Congress to send the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act to his desk. The Congressional Black Caucus now focused on two things, requesting for the president to talk about policing in his State of the Union next week and using the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act as a starting framework for new legislation. The parents of Tyree Nichols accepted an invitation to attend President Biden's State of the Union address next week. House Democrats plan to reintroduce the George Floyd Act right after the address. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. The Federal Reserve says it will raise interest rates a quarter of a percent. That's a fraction of the three-quarter percent raises it has implemented in recent months. The Fed pointed to recent data on wage growth and falling prices on consumer goods and energy as reasons for the reduced hike. However, officials noted that inflation is still elevated. The central bank is warning that future rate hikes will likely be necessary to cool inflation even further. This new hike is the smallest since March and investors are likely to see it as a positive sign. Concerns over large interest rate hikes have dogged the stock market for months now. Time to check your pantry. ConAgra is recalling more than 2.5 million pounds of canned meat. The recall covers various brands of Vienna sausages and potted meat products. According to the Department of Agriculture, the packaging defect can allow the products to become contaminated without the product showing any sign of contamination. The affected canned meat produced between December 12th last year and January 13th, and it was sold nationwide. The cans would have the establishment number P4247. So far, there haven't been any confirmed reports of anyone getting sick from eating the canned meat, but consumers are being advised don't consume these products. Instead, just throw them away or return them to the store. The Biden administration announced plans to end the COVID national and public health emergencies coming up on May 11th. The end of these declared emergencies will mean it's the end of free tests and treatments for many Americans. Other social benefits that help the nation cope with the pandemic also end. Gloria Pasmino takes a look at how this might impact you. After more than three years, the COVID national and public health emergencies will officially expire in the U.S. on May 11th. Jen Cates, senior vice president with the Kaiser Family Foundation, says that even though some of the health and social benefits put in place at the start of the pandemic will end when these two emergency orders expire, they don't represent all of the measures put in place. There is one big change access to free COVID home test. Whether you are Medicare uh, beneficiary or Medicaid or private, that's going away with the end of the PHE. And so uh, getting tests when you need them might be more challenging and you probably have to pay out of pocket in full for a home test or you might start facing cost sharing. Kate says to expect more cost sharing around certain therapeutic treatments as well from your insurance. So who will be impacted the most once these emergencies end in May? The uninsured and, and those with insufficient insurance will be the hardest hit, as has always been the case in our healthcare system. They stand to lose the most 
They do not have a guaranteed access to these things. But Kate says there is one thing to remember. Even with these declarations ending... Everyone with insurance, virtually everyone with insurance will get free vaccines, even after the federal supply is gone, even after the all of the emergency declarations are over. In Atlanta, I'm Gloria Pasmino. Looking outside with live cam here in San Antonio, it almost looks like everything's over with. But if last night, if you weren't woken up by all that thunder and lightning, good on you. You were yeah. thinking soundly. There was some thunder and lightning last night. We had a few claps here and there as some heavier stuff came through, but it was all above freezing. That was what's most important. Uh, we were glad to see that. We're still getting rid of some of that ice across the hill country. I want to show you a great time lapse. This is from Skywatcher. If you remember yesterday, we showed you the time lapse of the ice accumulating on the trees. Now we do the reverse. Watch what happened last night as temperatures warmed overnight and you can actually see it go the other way. The trees actually stop sagging and start to become more upright as it loses the ice. Pretty incredible uh, physics at work there and uh, a lot of the trees in northern San Antonio are looking a lot better. Maybe not the case uh, again as you get out in the hill country where there still are a lot of branches down and still several issues. I want to show you the, uh, vi the visible satellite picture and the radar. We do have some light showers trying to work in right now. These are all really light, but uh, they may cause you to use your windshield wipers at least briefly. Right now those are moving through the northwest side. But right behind that, we've got some clearing starting to show up. It's not fully clear, but clouds break up some and I think that clearing line tries to work its way a little closer to San Antonio. So my hope is that we do get some sun later this afternoon. In the meantime, it's 40 degrees at the airport, 37 Kerrville, 43 Honda, 42 with a little bit of sun in Uvalde, and it is now up to 50. One of the warm spots out in Del Rio this afternoon. 39 Rio Medina, 41 in Divine. Again, a little bit of shower activity there on the northwest side of San Antonio at this hour. All of it pretty light. We'll uh, look for 45 by 2 o'clock, 46 by 3 p.m., 47 this afternoon as we begin to lose some of those clouds. You know, the only winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. As we're going to tonight, it does get cold again. We're thinking mid to low 30s, and there could be a brief freeze in the hill country, so we'll be watching that closely. But uh, the good news here, a lot of warmth headed our way by the weekend. We'll have another look at that forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. A six-year-old spent nearly $1,000 on food from Grubhub, and he didn't tell his parents. But the bank found out before they did, and they put a stop to it.